Call now for the 2010 Steiner Tractor Parts Catalog, featuring the largest selection of new aftermarket parts for your antique or classic tractor. On this Tractor Fanatic webisode, Charles English shows off his one-of-a-kind Gold Leaf D, the tractor John Deere built in 1937 to commemorate their 100th year in business. All right, today I'm with Charles English. And senior. Senior, and I've already met the third. The, yeah. I haven't met your son, I guess. The missing link is mi working. Oh, it's working. Yeah. Somebody has to work, right? Yeah. Well, we're having fun today because we've got a very special tractor we're going to be talking about. Um, and this is the commemorative version of the D, right, that they did in 1937? What it is, it's the 100th anniversary of John Deere making his first plow. He made his first plow in 1837, and in 1937, John Deere Company painted this 1D gold to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the plow. So the idea was to do something distinctive, and obviously they picked the gold color. Right. So what did they do with this tractor? Well, John Deere used it at the Kansas City branch office and there was a man here about uh, 15 years ago had seen it, and he said that he had seen it at uh, somewhere in northern Illinois, that John Deere had actually hauled it in there on display. And that's the first time I had heard that, that they got that far mm -hmm. from Kansas City. But when uh, Kansas City John Deere got through with it, they let uh, Josiah Gooden Hardware, who was a John Deere dealer in Kingfisher, Oklahoma, have it because they had sold more John Deeres than anybody the year before. The story is they had to pay normal um, wholesale price for it, mm -hmm. and then they kept it for display for about six months, and then they sold it as a farm tractor. Okay. Well, let's walk around and take a look at it, because it sure is beautiful, and I, I want to hear the story of how you found it in the first place, but is there anything other, anything different than just the coloring of the tractor? And this 37 model, uh, they made 6,600 D models that year. Uh -huh. The only significance about this tractor, it was painted gold. And uh, I am sure it is the gold tractor because we've got some of the sheet metal and that, that, that the original gold was shining under it because it was mm -hmm. a deteriorated. Uh, it really, it shouldn't have been restored, but I liked the challenge, so I decided to see if I could restore <laughs> it. So someone had actually painted it green. In 19, 1955, uh, Mr. Hancock got it as a farm tractor in 38, after John Deere and Goodens got through with it, and he ran it for 18 years as a farm tractor, and then he traded in on a Massey Harris at the Kingfisher, Oklahoma, and uh, the paint was all gone, and they put a cheap green paint job on it, but there was still some gold under the fender and the fuel oh, tank and the draw bar. That clued you in that this yeah. was the tractor, yeah. So you, what do you do with it today? I've hauled that tractor to 94 shows. <laughs> I estimate I've hauled it about 30,000 miles. Well, it sure is beautiful. Now, you were telling me that you did a lot of the restoration work on it, but you had it painted by a friend. I did all the mechanical work, but uh, Joe Hoffman at St. Anthony, Indiana, who goes by the name of Junkyard Joe, <laughs> he painted the tractor for me. Uh -huh. uh, it was primed and painted in pieces, put back together, and then painted about three more times, and then uh, clear-coated. And this was the big boy tractor of John Deere's. They had the general purpose, the yeah. AB, and they were smaller tractors, right? Right. This was a much more powerful tractor. It's got 501 cubic inches. Uh, yeah, that's hard to believe. It pulled three bottom plow anywhere, and some places it would pull four. Wow. Do you remember the, the drawbar horsepower on these things at this time? Probably around 35 to 38 on yeah, the drawbar. Yeah, somewhere under. The 40. early ones were 27, but I think these are were, yeah. were up a little bit higher than that. As far as the way the D operated, what are we looking at here? How how would the operator run this? Well, you, that's just where you set your mm -hmm. your fanny right there. Steering wow. wheel. Here's the clutch. You push it forward to make it go. You pull it back. You pull it real hard back. It operates a pad on a belt pulley that slows it down. It down. There's a brake uh, for the parking brake. Mm -hmm. And here's the gear shift. It's got low, second, high. Okay. If you notice, the serial number is repoed. Yeah. Because uh, people nowadays will steal serial numbers off your tractors. Really? So I, I, put, the original the, I put the original locked up, and I put me a repo on there with the same numbers on it. I had no idea. People steal them off of tractors at shows and stuff? Yeah. 
they'll steal them if, if they think they can uh, use it on their tractor yeah. and make it seem like it's that tractor. Right. Wow. It's getting pretty cutthroat out there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I think sometimes the guy <laughs> smells money nowadays. That's what wow. happens. Wow. <laughs> now, this was in 1937, so there was, this is still the transitional period between steel and rubber tires, right? I mean, mm -hmm. that was, and this one was rubber when it Yeah, came this out, one right? here is rubber. So you get a lot of looks when people walk by this thing, don't you? I was kind of adding up only an estimate, but I suspect there's been around a million and a half people seen this tractor in person. Really? I mean, I kind of estimate cow. what some of these shows yeah. are for. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, 94 shows, I can imagine. So, do you have any other plans for it at this point, or? Just... I'm going to let it sit here till next spring, and if uh -huh. I decide to go on the road again with me, I'll mm -hmm. get me a different trailer. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get a trailer to put two D's in. I've got the, one of my right. birthday D's. I'm just about got it done. I'm going to put the two <laughs> in there and take it. Now, I also understand that you built a replica of this. Yeah, well, my three-year-old grandson was playing with it a while ago. <laughs> I hope he didn't tear it up. I think we got some pictures of that. Okay. Uh, Don't rely on standard insurance for your collector vehicles and collectibles. American Collectors Insurance provides affordable, agreed valued coverage for collectible cars, trucks and motorcycles, antique farm tractors, and for die cast and automobilia collections. Get a fast and free quote at AmericanCollectors.com today. Now Charles, what possessed you to build a half-scale version of the gold 1937 John Deere D? My, my oldest grandson, who's about 14 now, he and I was going to build it when he was little. Mm -hmm. And we started on it and gave up two or three times, and he got too big to play with it. So then I decided to build it for my little three-year-old grandson. <laughs> so we got it done for him. Well, and we met him earlier, and he, yeah. he looks like he really enjoys it. He's not quite big enough to drive it, I see. But uh, Oh, he can steer it, but yeah. that uh, yeah. clutch lever is, is operates a hydrostat. <laughs> And it's a little bit too jerky for him. Well, I love the details you've got. I mean, you've got everything, you know, even the same uh, decals and things, painting going on, the John Deere logo and, and even on the back. Uh, what powers this thing, though? It's got a three and a half horse Briggs engine that's uh, shaft driven into a 316 hydrostat rear end that we had to switch the direction of the input uh, shaft and impeller on the 316. Wow. Uh, the rear wheels are off of an 84 Mercury Grand Marquis. <laughs> the front spokes are off an International Horse Disc. The front rims are a Snapper Comet. Wow. Uh, well, you got pretty inventive with what you came up with here. Well, it was kind of hard to get everything half size. Uh -huh. To get the, the tires to exactly the half size of the big one. Right. And that in, ended up with those uh, 714 back uh, tires. and. Uh, the little ones in front are filled with that foam, so it uh, makes your front end a little bit heavy. So, And the controls are just like you showed me on, on the D, yeah. full-size D, and uh, that just, I mean, you couldn't have done a nicer job. Now, what caught me when you were running it earlier is the sound that this little thing makes. Yeah. Can you start it up and let the viewers at home hear what this sounds like? Well, we'll try it. Okay. got such a big tractor sound coming out of that very small Briggs engine. How do you accomplish that? Well, I've got a straight pipe come out this side and wrap it around behind the radiator and turn it come out the other side like it should be. Yeah. But I guess that length of the pipe makes it kind of make a little bit of racket. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that sounds very impressive. And why don't you show people how it actually operates? Well, what it does is a uh, clutch lever operates a hydrostat. Uh -huh. so just push forward a little bit. It goes forward and you pull backwards, it goes backwards. It probably took me as long to build that tractor as it did to restore the other one. Yeah, I imagine. There's a lot of a lot of uh, thought went into this. And not only that, but like you said, figuring out what would work scale-wise. Well listen Charles, I really appreciate you showing us this. Okay. It's awesome. Thank you. And uh, I wish you luck with showing because uh, you take this to show yeah, it too, goes right? to, it goes to the big one. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure people love to see this too. On our next Tractor Fanatic webisode, we'll be talking crawlers with Norbert Stahl as we get an up close look at a 1935 Klee Track and a 1949 AC.